Well, we're back, ladies and gentlemen, with the uh, flip for the game. Off you go, lads. Ready? Yep. Up. Cool. Uh, we'll start on offense. Cool, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll start up here. Sounds good. Easy. See you there. Great. I've got Jackson here, who's a player coach for Sublime. Jackson, you've uh, picked that end. Any strategy to that? Uh, not really. I think there's a bit of a fair breeze that way, so we try and take that on, but it's pretty much doesn't really matter in this condition, so... Yeah, very uh, very light breeze here. Thanks to you, Daniel. Thanks, Amy. I'm here with Miles Casson, one of the captains of uh, Chile. What's the uh, expectations like? Uh, I think there's a few nerves flying around. A few boys haven't played their first nationals before. Um, I think we've got a really quality opponent to, to have a run around with for the first game. Should be high intensity, good ultimate, and hopefully a good show for everyone at home. And uh, how do you bring those new players into the club, into the to, into the system? What do you do to uh, bring them and get them ready for this kind of uh, competition? I guess just sort of provide a, a development pathway where they feel at home and they can play to their strengths. They all sort of bring a unique skill set to the team and I guess it's just up to us as, as leaders to sort of embrace that and get them on stage doing their thing. All right, thank you for your time. Good luck for the match. Uh, we'll be back shortly with uh, your commentators for this game. What is spirit of the game? It's knowing the rules and when they apply. It's avoiding body contact wherever possible. It's keeping a positive attitude and enjoying the sport. It's being fair-minded even when the game is on the line. It's communicating respectfully with your opponent. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Ahead of this opens pool play match, Hot Chili from Melbourne playing Sublime Ultimate from Western Australia. My name is Daniel Clanton. I'm joined by... Beck Walbridge. Beck back Walbridge. Again. <laughs> Thank you for joining me on comms. Uh, Beck, tell me a, a little bit about these teams. Oh, awesome. Uh, well, being from Victoria myself, I probably know a little bit more about Hot Chili, um, but let's have a look at them first. So as we heard just from the captain, there's a lot of young up and comers. A um, couple of people to look out for. Micah, he's a new, one of the newer players who, um, and Riley Wood, who I'd be keeping a bit of an eye on. Um, then we've got some of the old old crew still knocking about teaching them. So we've got Josh Lapari, who'll be one of your quick little handlers directing play. And same with uh, Michael Lau. So a bit of an eye on them. Um, Jasper as well is one of those players who will be dictating what's happening on the field and controlling the pace a little bit for those younger ones. So exciting things from them. Uh, also with a coach, Al Don, um, who's been around the club, I think, since its formation, maybe. So um, yeah, having experience. that experience there will make a huge difference. And having someone who's not on the field, I think um, being able to watch the play will also be able to help out a little bit more. Al Don is uh, a wealth of experience, world's representative many, many times, you know, a legend of the sport here in Australia. So... Uh, his perspective will, could be very, very valuable. Uh, let's talk about Sublime. Yeah, we're well, talking about world's experience. We've got Kylo, um, who is recently been given a position on the Crocs, which is a world games team, which is kind of, I guess, to a certain extent, the peak of um, Ultimate Frisbee, a mixed game, kind of like a one below the Olympics, I guess, because we're not in the Olympics yet. So congratulations to him. So he'll be... Um, instrumental in Sublime. Um, also got Jackson, we heard from him a little bit earlier, so um, he's kind of keen to show the rest of Australia what they've got and what type of talent they've got. And then Jeremy Ha, who, one of those guys who just loves to put it, so it'll be interesting to watch his throws. There is a little bit of a breeze, as we heard earlier, and it was the same in the earlier game, it kind of comes and goes, so um, it'll be interesting to see early on, just as they're figuring each other out, what their plays are, um, where they kind of sit with each other. Um, I'm sure there'll be a couple of little throwaways as they're testing the waters before they get into um, get into the game and really see what they've got. So I'm excited to see Sublime play. I think a lot of people are, um, just to see wh what they've been hiding the last couple of years. Uh, hiding possibly not uh, on purpose. Uh, the uh, border closures with COVID has uh, certainly put a crimp in the style of Australian Ultimate. But with uh, those border closures now opening up and uh, life uh, going back to well the new normal, uh, we're now uh, 
we're back at Nationals. And Beck, as a, an experienced Division One coach yourself, uh, you coached uh, Juggernaut from the Heads of State Club. Yep. What kinds of instructions would you be giving to your team oh, in, in this kind of situation? First I game, mean, day one. Yeah, day one, early on. It's about um, really cementing the things that you've learned and you've really put into practice in trainings. Um, so making sure that you're sticking to your values, trusting the systems and the plays that you've put in place. Easier said than done, though. Um, <laughs> lots of teams, you come in with great plans and then, you know, you've got to change and adapt. So um, I guess... Just f figuring each other out, get those nerves out early so that you can really get into the groove of things um, and test yourself out a little bit. Um, you know, in early on in the pool play is when you can, you know, give your newer players a bit of a run against some experienced ones to get some get some kilometres in the legs and, um, and get them really learning how to be challenged so that if it comes to day four and you're in a final situation, they've had that experience against those, those to top tier players and can really give it to them. And with both teams uh, fielding a lot of uh, new players, a lot of rookies out there, I, I anticipate that it might not be the cleanest match, Beck. Do you, th do you think that that will yeah, play out? Yeah, absolutely. And I know, historically speaking, it may be a little bit different. Um, Sublime doesn't mind a bit of physicality in the game. Chile, not so much. So um, it'll be interesting to see how that pans out um, and whether Chile tolerates it, um, whether those younger players are comfortable with that physicality because... Some teams love it and they're happy to have that physicality and it can create a really interesting contest. But there are some teams that, I mean, we are a non-contact sport, so theoretically there shouldn't be anything. But, but like uh, in soccer and netball and all the rest, you know, non-contact comes with its own inverted commas. And, and, and when you have, uh, you know, some 14 men uh, running flat out on a field, <laughs> sometimes, you know, that, that is one of the rules that um, there, there is room for a bit of an agreed yeah, meeting in the middle. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see if Chile early on say, no, we're not going to tolerate it, or if they're going to be all right with a little bit of argy-bargy. So we so, just had the siren go. Yeah, that is time on. So our, uh, our game clock will be fairly accurate this game. That's a, a good sign. Uh, Boche with the uh, Frisbee in hand. He looks to be the one who is going to pull for Sublime. They're going to go on defense, running right to left to begin the game. This one is going to be good. Boche, a uh, stalwart of the Sublime Club. And here's the first pull of the game. It's a low one inside out. Oh. And Chile will immediately work out of a horizontal offense. Galt, center of the disc to Pentland. Pentland, that lefty style. That'll be an interesting uh, wrinkle for the sublime defense to hold because right now their forehand force is a backhand for the lefty. Chile working down the field. Ramsey back to Pentland. Pentland is just going to go outside in. It's going to float though. Boche in the oh. area. It's off hands. Boche gets it. Great quick movement there from Chile. They were not holding onto that disc for very long. But they've coughed it up and uh, we seem to have been a little bit prophetic insofar as there is a turn in the first point. Oh, will break the mark. Sublime. Their chance to have some offense. A nice low release to Robertson. He'll go further down the field to Daniel Chang. Oh, looking for the reset. He gets it. He will look to drive this defensive offensive set. Oh, will reset to Poche. The dominator movement from O doesn't come off. Boche will break the mark with an air bouncing backhand. It pops up in the air. It's handled well, though. Robertson again. Chang. They're a little bit static down the field. Sublime. They're looking to be one out. Robertson gets a reset. Chili. Happy to sit off a little bit. Robertson with a break. They're on the break side of the field. The around isn't there. They're on the doorstep. Schmidt goes back to Kylo. And he's going to break as well oh, to Boche. Oh, risky throw. That was a bit low. <laughs> it works out for Sublime. They go up 1-0 in the game. They take the first break and off a wayward floaty throw. They strike first. Now, Jackson and Kyle, they, the two that both just assisted with that and got the score there, they've been playing with each other a very long time. So even when you have those, oh, here we go. Let's watch this first of all. So this, going back to the block, Penland, um, he just 
put it in the air, that edge. Yeah, that wind, I think, caught it a little bit and just couldn't quite get the hands to it. That's Wood there, one of their newer players who went for it then. And then, oh, it's very low. <laughs> but it works. It works. Uh, Sublime more than willing to attack the break side early uh, with their uh, their offense. It was interesting, Sublime's offense then. It was They were almost sending one person at a time. Um, to do the cuts quite comfortable with what it looked like a bit of a foot race just going for it and going hard um, I don't know how sustainable that is for a whole tournament but look it works for the first point well Sublime have always been known for their uh, physical and athletic play uh, that foot race uh, if uh, the history is anything to go on yes that that's going to be their plan for the tournament as Kasten settles underneath it and gets it in play so Sublime are going to bring a defensive wrinkle the around break to Pentland Pentland thinks about it. Instead, he resets it. And Sublime, more than happy, just to hold this up a little bit. And Chile, not with a clear plan by the looks of it. A bid from O. Pentland, working against Francois. A little bit of a chop on the mark. So, so because it's self-umpired there, that what's happened there is that uh, Jasper has said, hey, mate, you're giving me a bit of a knock. You can't do that. So they're having a bit of a chat about it now. Um, and it looks like not contested, so Sam said, yep, fair enough, and it just comes back in. Pentland. Oh, oh another oh. bid. More than happy to get after it. A sublime. The dominator movement comes out. And Chile, for a moment, had some momentum. Then the oh. momentum is stopped. Another big bid. Lapari on the far sideline. Sublime are going to throw themselves at this one. Nice reset. Wood. Looking down the field. He's going to have to reset it. They're going backwards more than they're going forwards at the moment. Wood again. So far, they're not able to move it down the field. That's the first downfield cut in four passes. Pentland tries to get something moving. Dominator movement. Cast it. Wood, a nice junky move to get up the line a little bit. The sublime defense oh. has come up with it. Monty Mazurai stepping in front, getting the block, and now they're just going to stick it. He's going to stick oh, it on the right of Francois. Oh. Francois oh. can't Great get bid. there. Great bid. Well, Sam Francois, he has had to put the wheels on and... He's nearly got there. Asked a lot of. So uh, in Ultimate Frisbee, when you see a dive like that, we call that a layout, and it's pretty spectacular, pretty impressive um, to put your body on the line like that. So Sublime, when they first pulled that disc, so threw it down, they put on a, a zone, so they had a lot of people around the disc early. Um, interesting to see if they do that now. Well, they're going to go back to the match. Oh, Wood can't get there. It pops up high and Sublime will get another opportunity. Take a moment to settle the offense. The reset around to Lou. There's a pick call in the stack. Tell us a little bit about pick and, and what that is, Beck. Yeah, sure. So a pick is when a defensive player is blocked by another player um, from chasing their, their person that they're marking up against. Um, so in AFL, we'd call that shepherding. Um, and so you can't do that in Frisbee. And so it just means that that player, defensive player gets to catch up. So making up his ground. And now Sublime still with the offense. Lou gets up the line. Lou for the goal. Sublime go up 2 nothing. Wow, what a start for the boys from Western Australia. Apparently they play pretty good Frizz over there. Yeah, well, we've been waiting to see what they've got. And they're certainly showing us, aren't they? So, well done, well played by them. Um, just playing a much cleaner game. They are taking the early options when they're open. Chile tends to be holding on to it, being a bit timid with the disc at the moment. Um, and I think that that'll change as they kind of play through these jitters. But Sublime have just got that aggression. They're just going for every single shot. And all of their cuts and runs are hard. And, I mean, check out this defense. They're just going. They're here to play. And what, what is it like when uh, a player's out there and, you know, the, 
the opposition's, you know, throwing their bodies at it. What, what does that do to you mentally? Oh, I think particularly um, Sublime would know, Chile being quite a younger side, that, that that's really intimidating and it's really nerve-wracking when you, you know, you see a, what, 80, 90 kilo thing flying at the air to you, regardless of where the disc is and where that player is. That's really intimidating and can influence um, how you catch um, and your decision making after you, even after you've caught it. Um, so it's it can be a really effective defensive thing. However, we did see earlier Kyle did do a layout, so he jumped for the disc, and then it left his player way open, um, which allowed them an easy pass. So there, there is a flip side to it, um, but a really good strategy. So we've got a timeout now, um, I believe, called by Chile. Yeah, going down two breaks early, not where you want to be. I think Amy Chang on the sideline has found out some information for us, Amy. Thanks, Daniel. Definitely with two breaks down, Chile have called that timeout. Their main message in the timeout, stay clean, stay clinical, get the disc to the middle of the field. Okay. Get, Smart words there. Get the disc to the middle of the field. Let's see if they can uh, follow those instructions. Coach Aldon, uh, he knows a lot. Yeah, and I think one of the things that I've learned in my experience of coaching is keep your messages clear and short. <laughs> um, you don't want to give 50,000 messages of fixing all these different things. So having those two clear messages gives a really um, good direction for them the next couple of points. And as far as uh, directions go, it doesn't really get much simpler than that. Get it to the middle of the field. It's uh, pretty easy to, to understand that one. The sublime defense, though, was it ramped up the pressure in that second point. Uh, Chile really struggling to get any kind of forward momentum down the field. They had to reset the disc four or five times before they saw any kind of meters. And even then, it was only a, a few meters at that. So Boche to give us a pull. He'll go outside in a, a loopy one. It'll come down with a bit of velocity. Pentland lets it bounce, and it rolls deep into the uh, Chile end zone. This is better. Big bid from Boche. Lapari with the disc. He breaks back to the middle of the field. And Galt. Sublime. They get their defense back on. So Chile will now have to work from a little bit more of a static set as Wood. He's seen plenty of it early. Engages Pentland. Pentland gets up the line. He can't get free. Galt gets the reset late in the stall. Very, very static down the field. It looks like Chile are running some sort of dominator isolation set with a lot of space down the field. The receivers all the way in the end zone, allowing the handlers space to try and get something. Oh, oh gets a big piece of it. It looks like he's shaking his head. He's not going to give it up easy, I don't think, Carlo. So when two catch it like that, at the exact same time, offense gets to keep it. However, if Kyle believes that he got it first, so we can watch here. Oh, I mean, hard to call it. So if Kyle believes that he got it first, oh, there you go. So it's going to yeah. offense. I, I don't think Kyle ever really wanted to keep that. I think it was more just uh, making a little bit of a point as Caston with the Frisbee. He looks for Pentland. Pentland gets uh, a little bit of space. Much bigger wingspan than the smaller O. Nice reset across the front of the face. Of the stack by Lapari. Lapari looking for Pentland again. Kyle wearing him like a cheap sweater. Casting in space. He's going to have a look. There is space there. It's oh. in. The one that Chile needed. They go back to 2 1. The pressure there around the disc, Dan. That was amazing by Sublime. I want to say it was Sublime by them. Um, they just didn't have a chance. Like it made it really, really difficult and just increased the pressure for the person with the disc to make them really feel like they had to just pop it up. Didn't pay off, but if they keep that up throughout the whole game, gosh, that's going to be hard. But that's a nice moment for Chile um, to understand that, hey, Sublime are bringing all this pressure, but we're good enough. We're equal to Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And look, their message was to take it to the middle of the field. They did get stuck on the sideline for a little bit, but as soon as they centered it, look at it. So our Don, listen to you, coach. He knows what's up. <laughs> uh, listen to you, coach. <laughs> listen to your parents. Listen to your coach. <laughs> But uh, well listen done to your by, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> well done by Lopari to catch that under pressure. That was uh, not an easy grab. Well, I think for the, yeah, this is the first time today we're going to see Jordi Halisay rip a pull for Hot Chili. Pulling is one of those weird niche skills in Ultimate. You don't really pick someone for their pulling ability, but 
it's nice when someone has a, a decent rip on them. And, well, Halisay has uh, that. And as I've talked him up, he's not really thrown that very well. So uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll maybe come back to that on his next one as Lou under the mock to Mazurai. Another break, Francois back to Mazurai. No, he holds it. And now one of the rookies for this team. As Wardrop moves it out sideways. Monterey, Mazurai flies oh. under heavy contact. Another popping up pass. It's in the corner for Lou. They've done it. Easy goal there. But they made it seem easy. I'm saying easy. It's not easy. <laughs> it's Jeremy Ha rather with the goal. 3-1 Sublime's offense. Absolutely. Uh, very, very in control. Chile not really able to create any kind of pressure there. It was only really that one wayward throw that Monty Maserai did really well with. So Chile, they're similar to what Sublime's been doing, put on a what we call a zone where they've got more people around the disc rather than matching man, man to man or player to player downfield. Um, they only do it for a couple of passes, which is same as what Sublime's been doing. However, Chile, they let a couple go through that initial zone for those couple of passes before they locked on to match defence. So it'll be interesting to see if they continue that when they're on defence um, or if they just go to their match. What do you think they should do? This early on in the game, I'd stick to the plan. Um, clean up what they're doing <laughs> a little bit more. Um, it's, you know, game one. You've got to see what you can throw in what sticks. Um, I tried a couple more times before I changed my plan. Some excellent advice and cool head under pressure is, well, it's handy in almost every sport and especially an ultimate because uh, one of the peculiarities of our sport is the stall count and the pl player that's uh, counting to 10, often probably a little bit faster than they ideally should. Boche, with the pull. That's a pretty good one. Makes it to the end zone line and Pentland brings it into Kasson. A nice uh, sprinting pass out to Lapari. Pantland. Sublime are going to go with their zone. Pantland. Uh, throws a bounce pass. Now that one hasn't been allowed since version one of the rules. He's got to make it on the full. And Kyle O will go to pick it up and bring it in. And so now Sublime go to work. Chang. Nice. Pass out to the middle of the field as Schmidt finds Robertson. O is free. He's got a lot of space and a lot of time to look at the end zone. He points to where he wants it. Boche gets the reset. And Chang is free in the corner. Sublime. They do it again. They break Chile for the third time this match, Beck. Kyle just there. He's okay. So, I mean, granted, he had a very young player on him. So, he had Hudson on him um, for that point, which is great. And I think that that's awesome. And Hudson had him covered when he had the disc on the sideline. Kyle wanted to put it, and Hudson shut that down, but he just could not keep up with him. Um, so, you'll see here that we have the turn, unfortunately, just could not grab it. Kyle picks it up here, and he's just wanting to put it, but he just, he's so calm. He just controls, tells his players where he wants them to go. It's, he's a great leader. He's been a coach for a couple of years as well. So he's got that head on him to see a whole field. Um, and I think that that's a real attribute and he's able to bring to a game. When you're uh, creating a team, do the personalities uh, go into you know, oh, how it makes you a create difference. things? Yeah, it can, it can be the difference between for me between some selections of players because um, you want to have a team that's going to be a cohesive unit and that are going to bring each and lift each other up and be a positive environment for everyone rather than you know that one polarizing player they might be really good however um, are they going to drag other people down and that's a risk Jeremy Ha pulling this time he gets uh, every piece of that that one actually goes a few meters deep in the end zone and so Pentland oh, bid Woods Pentland in space he goes fast down the field to Galt nice pass to Lapari. Lapari's going to send a low oh, one. It's in. What a crab. It's in. They've scored. Micah Ramsey with a nice layout bid. Hot chili. 
that quick movement, that ripped that open for them. Um, Jasper's early quick movement and then Lapari's vision to see him in that end zone. Maybe a little bit faster than he wanted it to go, but, you know, there is a bit of a breeze and it's a consistent breeze at the moment. Um, but, gosh, that was nice to see. Well, Michael Ramsey showing some wheels to, uh, to get there. Are we going to cross to Amy Chang, who's uh, found something out for us? Thanks, Daniel. I've been observing the chilly um, line calling, which happens at the beginning of each new point, and I've noticed that Al, their coach, has a very hands-off approach to the line calls. So it looks like he's really trusting and empowering his players to make those decisions on the line. Often we'll see coaches go and join the field and make the line calls. Al Dom standing on the sideline. Uh, what kind of coach were you, Beck? Did you get on there and make calls or were you... It depended on what the team needed at the time. I okay. was working with a team with big personalities. <laughs> um, so occasionally just had to go on there and just let them know what's up because sometimes too many voices can be a problem. Um, I know I have been noticing as well, Amy, that um, Al's been kind of having a few just conversations on the side He's, you know, that very old school t style of coach where you don't need to be big and loud. You can just have those small comments. Well, here's Jordy Hallisay to put it. And as I, like, I've talked him up, you know, an absolute treat. And his first two pulls have been, <laughs> well, the first one was mediocre. And that one is kind of garbage uh, going out on the full. So you'll see there that Kyle just popped his hands in the air. Um, so what that means is that means that he's taking what we call a brick. So, what what yeah. kind of advantage does that give to the offense? Well, it means that they can set up in the middle of the field. And when there's a bit of a breeze and things like that, it gives time to set up a play. You can see he's walking up to the cross. So that's where he gets to take it rather than a sideline where you can get a bit trapped. Oh, it's through three. I don't know how he's done that. He's threaded the needle, something shocking. It's come off and oh, we'll go to Boche. A nice underpass. Robertson combining. Alexa. Back to Kyle O. Bruce, as they call him. Robertson, who's finding himself at home. Oh, a pass that is kept in bounds. Excellent by Radu Alexa. Boche can't get it. He throws it out in front of O, who it was just a little bit early for him. It's a turnover, the first one of this sublime team. Popko to pick it up for. Chili, and he's just going to reach all the way down the field with oh. a huge bend. Michael Kelly getting horizontal. Popko asking a lot oh, of him. Looks like there's an injury from that. So it was a big, big jump, big leap. Probably just needs it this early in the um, tournament. You don't want to be risking your body because you've got another three days to play. So uh, smart move, head off, look after yourself so that you can maintain the tournament. Michael Kelly actually got there. He had a big piece of that. His hand was on it, and he just uh, wasn't able to catch it. So it's turnover. That's lucky for Sublime. There's a little bit. Sometimes luck is what you need. 4-2 the score. And Kyle O to bring it in. Boche goes up the line immediately. Chile looking to run some sort of zone scheme. Boche gets a reset. He goes straight back around to Robertson, who's finding plenty of the disc at the moment, really helping this sublime offense move down the field, looking comfortable. Boche, high release to Alexa. Boche with the lefty, Robertson. They're working down the field. Chile have transitioned into a match defense. Their single coverage down the field. Boche engages for a moment. Alexa gets a reset. He's going to break. A nice looking break to Boche. The cut to the corner isn't there. It may be a little bit mistimed. Boche looking to engage. Alexa trying to get free. The lefty again. Opening it up. He's going to oh. put it in the corner. Sublime go up. 5-2. Now you would have um, heard while that um, Chile, when they got onto defense, there was lots of people from the sidelines screaming like, home, home, home. So um, what that's about is that's just letting the teammates know the force, so which way they want the disc to go. So you'll notice that often when they're um, marking up against the person who's got the frisbee, they're trying to make them just throw to one side of the field. Um, that just makes it easier for the players downfield so they don't have to mark on both sides of the player. And in um, that passage of play, 
back. We saw the disc get advanced, get advanced by Sublime down the brake side, what we call the brake side, didn't we? Yeah, so the brake side is when you're you're managing to throw to the side that the defence don't want you to throw to. Um, so when you're hearing that home or away or they're yelling out backhand, backhand, that's that's the defence telling the players on field which, uh, which way they should be forcing the disc to go. And the goal of defence is to get that disc travelling just to that side of the field. Doesn't always work. Um, and, you know, the good throwers, it doesn't matter which way you force them, they're going to be able to throw it where they want to anyway. Okay, Sublime to pull it in. They're up by three in this game and looking really good against an outfit. Hot chili that are building. Oh, heavy pressure by Jeremy Ha. Can't get it. Lapari. Bit of mess in front of him. Caston. That rangy reach. Francois with pressure. Looks like there will be no call. Sam Francois gets himself a block. I wondered if that was going to come back. Yeah. It, it looked like there was a bit of a clash, but apparently not. Carpenter. Picks it up, goes back to Ha. Jeremy Ha, the low throw. Ball drop, down the field, Sublime, moving it well at the moment. McKenzie gonna ask a lot of Maserai. Oh. Can't get there. Ball drop, one of the uh, newer players on this Sublime team. He's not afraid to put one in the end zone and say, uh, Hey, Monty Maserai, one of the veterans, go chase that. <laughs> Pentland will go back and pick this up. They'll get an opportunity, Will Hot Chili. Take it easy, get a bit of a rest, get some, suck some air in. Chili setting into a horizontal offensive structure. The downfield cutters are a little bit slow to get moving, so Pentland's a little bit stuck here. He'll get it off. And get it going. Ramsey. Caston. And now Galt. And Galt's going to put it up. He's going to send it to Woods. And Woods is going to trip Whoa. over. Yeah, it might Lepari. be a call. I think that was Lapari going long. It was Lapari. And it looks like there will be a call. Ryan Black involved in the play. So the call there, I think Lapari is saying that he was tripped over. So he couldn't actually get to where he wanted He's to get to. He's going to retract the call. And Black, oh, what hands up high by Monsu Mazurai. So sublime, they go a little bit faster. Wardrop, Wardrop going oh. to Jeremy Ha. Oh, they like it to the boys. 6-2 the score, Sublime up in this game. Sublime just playing a faster, cleaner version of Ultimate. They're taking every opportunity. You notice, like, right then, that was a perfect example. Um, Ha came under and did a, a cut under and then he realised he wasn't going to get it so he turned around and he went deep we'll, we'll quickly watch this first went deep um, oh great D yeah, Fr Sam Francois Clean. getting up there and putting enough pressure on it this was the, yeah. the errant throw to Monty Maserai he nearly got there did Maserai right idea of a throw just a bit right. too far in front yeah right space um, yeah so this one that was him clearing from the, his initial cut where he cut under. So taking advantage of every opportunity, as soon as there's a player open, Sublime is seeing it and then just putting it out in front. And when you say uh, clearing, what, what is that? What, what? You don't want too many people near the disc because that just creates a lot of chaos. And so often you'll see players running towards the disc quite hard and then they'll suddenly turn and head back the other way. And so that's clearing out to give that space to other people to come into. In that situation, though, also turned it into an amazing cut to get the score. Which, when you uh, clear with intent, sometimes you do find yourself open. And a nice throw to Ha gets them another goal. Sublime looking really good at the moment. Enjoying this match. And at the moment, it is Chile that need to find some answers. Caston, Woods, over his head to Pentland. And Pentland moves it quick to Hudson. Pentland goes back to Woods. Sublime using a zone to slow down the chilly offense. Woods. You can hear the calls from the sideline as Sublime transition now into match. 
Single coverage along the field. Everyone one-to-one -one on their players. Caston catches the inside throw. Lapari getting involved. So another one of those picks that we were talking about earlier. So Kyle was chasing after Lapari and then someone got in his way. So because that affected uh, whether Lapari would have got it or not, it goes back to Miles. The cast in. The low one. Again, we see an unforced offensive error from Chile. It's not the first time they've just thrown it away. There's no nice way of putting it, unfortunately. And James Glover to pick it up. Oh, and oh, oh with a miscommunication. Daniel Chang thought for a moment he needed to come under. Kyle wanted him to keep going, and that's another turnover. An unforced offensive error for Sublime. Pentland will bring it in. Sublime make an adjustment. The audible was called. They go to a zone. Pentland working in a little bit of space. There's nothing really down the field, so... You can see Pentland gesturing that he wants his players to move up so that they can make some progress down the field. And Kyle is assassinating Lapari at the moment. And now Woods is going to go with a really good oh. looking flick. That's an excellent looking flick. And it's Hudson. Oh, Hudson. Huge. Hudson goes huge. What a catch there by young Matthew Hudson. 6-3. Riley is a real up and comer for this. He's kind of made his way through a couple of B teams and he's now made it onto the big show. And boy, is he uh, making a bit of a splash already. Well, I think Riley Wood has maybe just picked up a nickname. We'll call him the big show from now <laughs> on. That flick was, that's the that young players just dream about ripping. That's a, a 45 C meter flat. Send it, laces out. Go get it, young man. And to maintain that body position, to stay in front and, and time that jump to get it just at the right time, that's, that's not an easy skill. Um, so credit to Hudson to get that. Now, in that point, you mentioned that Kyle was assassinating um, what in yep. the zone. What do, you, what do you mean by that? Well, why don't you tell me? You're the expert <laughs> here, Beck. I am just the pundit. <laughs> they wheel me out of the, uh, the retirement home just to come and call the games. Uh, so, you, you tell me, what, what is the right, assassinator? Right. So when you're in a zone, often you'll, sometimes you'll find a player who is just generating a lot of movement. Um, and so what you will do is you'll make sure that, that you're matching up on that one person just to keep them out of play because you're recognising they're dangerous. Halisay. All right, he's starting to warm up, is uh, Jordy Halisay, because uh, that's what we were talking about in the pregame. As Sublime, they struggled to get the first pass off. Jeremy Ha gestures. They're working in a phone box at the moment. And Black, Black is going to go for Monty Mazurai. Mazurai has to go a long way. He makes it with the wheels. He's on the doorstep. He looks, and there is a free player on the far side of the field. Sublime, seventh goal of the match. Mazurai going quickly. Over to uh, Michael Vernon, who cleared the space. Man, the, the wheels on Maserai to get there. I, I was watching it. I didn't know that he was going to do it, but he's still got speed. <laughs> Ryan Black, one of the rookies. He rips a very nice forehand. There's only one person that ever had a chance of getting that, and that was Monty Maserai. He got there easily in the end. Didn't even have to lay out. Vernon drags the two players, opens it up, and Sublime now 7-3, a comprehensive lead at the moment. They've played some great ultimate out there. Oh, absolutely. And look, we, we wanted to see what they've been doing the last couple of years. They've definitely shown us. However, they do have a smaller squad than Chile, so they've got less players playing at the tournament. So game one, day one, everyone's got fresh legs, doing pretty well. They can run very hard. Will they be able to maintain this intensity for the four days? I don't know. Um, they're a strong team. I know that they're, they're very fit, but can they maintain this? Yeah, some very fit men out there. Kyle O, oh, he's a, quite a, uh, an animal in the gym. And well, Sam Francois was um, over here with his shirt off and he has a hell of a rig on him, the young man. Pantland. 
Now they go down the sideline. Hudson, Hudson, he's going to oh. lay it out. Goal in space, Chile. That's a really nice offensive play for them. Very smooth. Jasper loves those give goes. If he could do that all day, he would be a happy man walking around with a big old smile on his face. He he loves that cheeky, sneaky little just quick throw back and forward. Um, and look, it works. It works for them very well. See Pentland really opening that up. Being such a, a tall man, a large frame, large wingspan, it's hard to cover in close proximity, isn't it? Absolutely, and, and that's something that I know that he's worked on over the years as he's continued to play is his ability to be able to, to control his throws. And, and you know, he, he started out as that lanky defensive player. Now he's really come to, on offense, um, really controlling the pace of a game. Instrumental in Chile. So we're on the doorstep of halftime. If Sublime score here, they'll take half. What do you think Chile need to do? Should they have called a timeout, perhaps? They've already used one this half. Um, I, I think they've done the right thing in not calling it yet. Um, but I think they're going to have to have a bit of a chat with leadership at halftime. Because they will have to find another gear as Hart receives. Oh, nice zone, breaking throw through the middle there, Mazurai. Ha, ha goes fast back to Mazurai, they break it straight through the middle, not really wanting to use any width. Sublime transitioning out as Bennett Carpenter just loops one up to Jeremy Ha, Ha breaks back to Monty Mazurai. These handlers very comfortable at the moment, just moving it and getting whatever they want. Now Vernon, very, very tall man, Vernon, he's stuck with it though, Francois bails him out, and Bennett, Carpenter is free, Vernon goes up the line, Francois is going to make a call, it did look like he got grabbed there by uh, Pickett. Uncontested, so the stall will come back in on zero. Francois. Ha. Out to Carpenter. And Carpenter is going to put it out into space for Monty Mazurai. That's half time. 8 4 the score. Beck Walridge. Sublime are looking real good here. They are looking very good, very strong, very confident. They're looking, their body language is showing a real confidence that Chile just don't seem to have. They're walking taller, they're walking bigger, louder, prouder. And Chile just are looking a little bit timid, a little bit shaken. We spoke about the physicality of the game, and I, I think that Sublime haven't necessarily been physical, but they've brought a presence to the field that can't be ignored. Um, and Chile are going to have to really bring some self-belief. I know that they've got their women's team sitting on the sideline now, so maybe that'll give them a bit of pep in their step. Yeah, chaos, chaos the... Uh women's team over there uh, sitting on the hillside getting some lunch perhaps before their game um, it's a it's a long day at these tournaments isn't it Beck how, how does the tournament play work for ultimate um, so depending on the different divisions so we've got women's division and opens division so I know that the the men's team tend to have four games in a um, in a day today and I was speaking to some of the women's team some of them have got three some have got four um, so you get normally one game off on that day, um, which you'd use to rest and recuperate, but still it's, you know, you could potentially have 100 minute games and that's a lot of minutes of ultimate for day one. Um, so, and they'll continue pool play until we get to the final series. Well, Amy Chang has managed to pull aside uh, San Francois for a bit of a chat. Thanks, Daniel. I've got Sam here from Sublime. Sam, you've been locked away from the rest of Australian Ultimate for so long and finally yourself and your team are back. What's it felt like to play? Oh, it's, it's been freaking amazing, to be honest. Um, you know, that first plane ride yesterday it was so, so surreal. It was like, you know, what's it like to be back on the plane? Yeah. And now to, to be playing after three years, um, the boys are just super excited to come back and touch the grass. Great, first thing, exciting playing, right? And then an exciting first game. That's really yeah. great to hear. Um, Sublime have been playing a really uh, physically aggressive <laughs> game. I've noticed <laughs> your teammates have been laying out. i noticed you've been laying out heaps. What's that part of in terms of strategy? Uh, to be honest, I think the team just really wants it. 
uh, the team's ready to put their life on the line. Like I said, like we've been waiting a long time to be out here, um, and we want to prove that we deserve to be here and win this tournament. Great. It's really exciting to hear that um, passion that's going to carry you through the rest of the tournament. Yeah. Um, finally, um, this is a good feeling. You're up so far. Do you think you'll stay confident for the rest of the game? Definitely, definitely. Um, we're very confident for the whole tournament, to be honest. Uh, we, we put a lot of work in. Like It's not just been a one-season thing. It's been a three-year thing. Uh, we've worked in the fitness. We've worked in the skills. We're confident we can win this tournament. Yeah. Great. Thanks so much, Sam. Good luck for the rest of the game. Thanks, Sammy. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. You heard it here. They're very confident about the rest of the game. Back to you, Daniel and Beck. Thanks, Amy. We're going to go to a quick halftime break here. We're going to watch some replays, and then we'll be back with the uh, second half of this Opens match between Sublime from WA and Hot Chili from Victoria. important. Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the second half of this Opens pool play match between Sublime from Western Australia and Hot Chili from Victoria. Beck Wallbridge, we were talking in the halftime about uh, Hot Chili needing to make a change here. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I mean, we heard it from Sam himself. He said that they're confident, they've got the belief that they can win, and we're not seeing that same belief from Hot Chili. So I think they need to change up the plan a little bit and a bit more belief. All right, Jordy Hallisay to launch one. It's another pretty good one. I'm glad that he's backing up my call. And Hart moves it to Monty Mazarai. Vernon goes out, opening up space underneath for San Francois. Hart gets a sideways cut. They're working it down this right-hand side. And it looks like they're starting it, how they finished up the first half. What a nice throw that is, just hanging it out there. Oh, Mazarai has to go low. He gets there. Oh, stray one from Alex O'Neill. 
O'Neill gets up the line. Jeremy Hart going inside, drawing the contact. He is going to call the foul. It's going to be uncontested. Uh, Peter Magoo. <laughs> Interesting choice to throw that whilst with a knee on the ground. Well, drawing the contact, you can call the foul and have a th free throw. San Francois in space. Yep, Sublime are off. Uh, they're, they're starting their second half the way they finished their first. Uh, very, very cool. Calm, collected, straight in the end zone they go for their ninth score of the game. So one thing I've noticed about Sublime when they are on offense is that they're actually got their players, their downfield players, actually quite deep. Um, so they're starting their cuts from quite deep in the field. As they get closer to the end zone, obviously that compresses a little bit, but they're starting quite deep, which just gives their players so much space to run around in. Um, and they, they end up just beating Chile to, to the open space um, every time because they've just got so much space to move and play with. A little bit of a blown coverage actually on that play. See, we're just getting the defender turned around completely. And it was a routine open side throw, something that these teams would uh, normally do as a warm-up, less so than a drill, and expect to complete pretty much all of their passes in that kind of situation. Yeah, they're just Sublime just don't seem to have an off switch by the look of it. That's a good problem to have. <laughs> when you're playing ultimate, it'll be Boche to pull. He has the disc in hand for Sublime at the moment. Boche has been using the outside in, instead goes inside out on this one. Woods settles underneath it, gets it in play to Kasten. And Sublime bring that zone again. Woods with Witt, Pentland. And now it's Hudson. Uncontested. Ryan Schmidt not, uh, not going to argue that one. It, the disc did come out in a weird way, so probably as a result of arm contact or hand contact by the looks. So Hudson gets another go. Caston. Low throw that's gathered pretty well by Micah Ramsey. Caston gets a reset. A reset pivots into it. It's a low one. Oh, Lapari under pressure. He coughs it up. He'll be disappointed with that one. Well, he had it, and then he didn't have it. So James Glover. Oh, and Lapari's <laughs> just going to say, well, I don't like that young man. I want the Frisbee back. A layout point block, which was probably actually going to be a turn anyway because uh, the reset had gone up the line. Kirsten, a low one. Lapari. And Lapari provide the spark that they need. He gets around. He gets up the line. Glover struggling. Kirsten. He's covered well by Boche. Woods, Jinx. Doesn't get free, though. It's going to oh. go into the end zone. Kyle O popping up, getting the block. Well, they needed that. Did Sublime. There's the outcut from Alexa. O decides to get foot blocked. It's Woods with a clean one. Now, one thing I've learned, you don't want to make Kyle O angry. <laughs> and I reckon that foot block might have put a little bit of Extra fire in his belly. Not saying that it would convert to anything right now. But uh, Wood should be pretty proud of that because that's on a, a croc player, uh, which is pretty high caliber player. Kasten. Lapari working in a phone booth. Oh, he draws the bid from Boche and then just backs up to catch the easy flip. 9-5. Lapari there really lifting for the team. That I mean, yes, he did drop it, but... One thing that a leader can do is when they make a mistake is quickly rectify that mistake, and that's exactly what he did. Well, rectify it, he did. We go back to the drop where, well, it just pinged off the hands. And then it was Glover who, uh, who got absolutely hand-blocked. That's as clean as you like. That is an excellent play by Lapari. Come back to Kyle O getting involved. Lots of action in this point. It oh, was absolutely. Bang, bang, bang. Turns left, right, and centre. And see Woods actually stepping off, just setting up for that around, and then you know, just gets a toe on it. 
Let's uh, swing over to Amy Chang on the sideline. Thanks, Daniel. I've just had a quick chat to Al, the coach of Chile, and he was saying their focus has not drifted from what they said at the, in the first half. It's going to be focusing on execution, really clean execution. They want to shake off the nervous start, and it looks like it's worked for them. So nerves is what Al Down is uh, putting the first half performance down to. I'm not sure I agree with him because Sublime are playing pretty well. I don't... Halisay. He's going to rip another good one. Is it going to come back in? It just faded late. Oh, it's just in. What a pull by Halisay. And Ha will be in his own end zone to start. They're a little bit deep. Uh, Sublime not really expecting the zone. Maserai will get it down to Ryan Black. And they're away. There's lots of players just streaming down the field. McKenzie. Goes back to Black. Mazarai. Just taking a moment to let the offense settle. Oh, that is a face throw. McKenzie gets it. There's a pick down the field, so play will stop. And it's probably just as well. Now, rules recently changed on this. So this will be a little bit interesting to see what happens is because if the pick the stoppage affected the play then that wouldn't be a turnover it goes back to the person who had the disc if the person who has the disc still throws it and it does not affect the play should theoretically be a turnover because he threw it think, away we'll think, see do you think this should be a turn then back i think it should be a turnover but I, I, i'm not on the field <laughs> <laughs> i agree with you i think this should definitely be a turn uh, but there's always confusion because the pick call happened a long time ago. Absolutely. And and potentially other players could have made cuts. Which, so you can argue both. Yeah. So you'll notice there are some people in green on the field at the moment. They are the advisors. Yeah, the game advisors. I did have a quick chat with uh, all four of them that are here this weekend. and They're always a, a big help. So McKenzie gets it right the second time. Jeremy Ha is going to... Oh, that is a speculator if ever there was. Oh, what a great oh. So we had this in the last game as well, where if you... Oh, bit of a chat. So if you jump and you, your feet don't touch out of bounds and you throw it back in, it's still disc in play. Well, oh, wouldn't that have been something? Ha goes big. Chili having to work it off the sideline. They work it out. Halisay takes a hit. It looks like he will call foul. As M Michael Vernon, that's a big man, flying. Halisay. Instead, goes for the reset. Gonzalez Correa. It will stay with him, not affecting that reset throw. Oh, that's a bit of a... Yes! No! Sam Francois has not come up with that, and I don't know how. It is going to be a turnover. Stephen Thomas is a magician of some description, and Nathan Payne has dropped the throw. So Ryan Black will work. Oh, he's just going to put it. He's going to stick it. Monty Maserai. Monty Maserai! That was bold. He didn't even look upfield. <laughs> Lou has, uh, there's been a little bit of contact between Maserai and Lou. Uh, they're going to discuss this. Maserai, he, he got there. He got his right hand to the Frisbee. I think you were like, sorry. Uh, do you want to just like, yeah. Fin finish what you're going to say first. Sorry. Uh, so uh, I was running and then you leapt from, I think, just slightly behind. So you matched the same like body at the same time. Yeah. Um, and I was going for the disc as well, I was going for my yeah. right hand. So okay, I really so. felt that I was in front, yeah. had a play at the disc, yeah. made the play, while I've made the play, there's been contact. Right. And so I feel it's a foul. I, well, I would say that I'm going for the same disc, so I'll contact. Yeah. Um, yes. um, uh, can I get your perspective? Yeah. Uh, it looked like you're fairly even when you jumped, and then that's what put you in front. And whether that jump put you into the contact or not, I, I don't know. It's hard to tell who initiated contact from, from the side I was standing yeah. at. So even though I was like in front of him and the disc, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, well, I, yeah, what's the yep. rule, I guess, is... 
uh, just as long as we're both making an even play. Yeah, so there was nothing really dangerous about either player. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to tell who initiated the contact there, whether you've jumped in front or whether you jumped and then the contact came from, from your opponent. Right? Yep. So it's not clear okay. um, who's initiated that. Okay, so so yeah, the best thing is to contest it. Yeah. All right, sure. Contest. Okay, Okay, so they just could come back. We heard all of that. Um, and I just want to point out something. Monty Mazurai convinced he was in front, but we can see on the replay that he wasn't. And it's a really key point in Ultimate where you're running and playing and he, he felt like he was in front and he just wasn't. So this is where you're entitled to your perspective. He kind of felt like um, the contact from Lou um, from the left-hand side of his body affected his play. And positioning really not important it was more the contact did it affect what happened we'll come back to it because i want to get your thoughts on it beck as nazari throws a floater ha claims it in front of vernon ha looking down the field trying to get something black gets up the line the inside throw sublime taking a breath francois around the corner to create some width for the offense of sublime Black slips on the reset. Ha is all kinds of free. Black to Jeremy Ha. Jeremy Ha with the Frisbee. They're a little bit deep. Francois gets up the line. Francois is going to score the goal for 10-5. And let's go back to the call. Beck, I want to get your, your opinion on this. What do you think? Oh, I, look, the amount of times that I've been on the field and I've thought, 100% that I'm in the right and then someone shows me a photo or I look at footage and I go oh whoops um, so I can understand where Mazzaro is coming from and the fact that he thought that he was in the right place um, however I think in that situation I, they did the right thing they spoke to the advisor I think the advisor gave what they saw as neutrally as possible and I think that it was the correct outcome in the end um, yeah, it's, it's great for us to sit here and go, oh, no, nah, like, definitely, he wouldn't have got that. But it's one I of the think... joys of being a pundit. We can <laughs> exactly. sit here and uh, make up whatever stories we yeah. want. And look, looking at the footage, I don't know that he would have gotten it if there was no contact anyway. Um, but, again, you don't know. You have no idea. You see, and that's where I would disagree. It, it seemed like that bump just put him a little bit off balance as he was bidding, and it maybe just threw him off, and that's why he didn't catch it. I... You know, we, we could, uh, this is the kind of thing that you could discuss over uh, several beverages um, of the fizzy variety and uh, have a great time doing it. Glover has found himself with disc in hand and he's going to pull one of the rookies. Uh, just uh, giving uh, the old man uh, Jason Bottier to the uh, the nod and saying, all right, old man, have a have a breather. I'll take this one. Caston now for Chile. Woods, oh, it's another low throw. The third one today, a miscued throw. Hot Chili just coughing up the disc way too cheaply. And this is deep in the red zone. Jackson Boche to direct the offense. Kyle O in space, working against Galt. He can't get free. He gets it eventually. There's the timed cut. Oh, it's a face throw that is too hot for Ryan Schmidt to handle. The wind has picked up a little bit in the last, I guess, minute or so, um, which potentially impacted that throw that Miles threw. Um, just a little bit stronger than it was and a little bit more consistent. So Chile having to work against the match defense for Sublime. Throw on the inside. Gold under a heavy pressure from Kyle O. It looks like the disc will stay with Gold. And now the throw to Lapari. Lapari looking for Woods. Galt all the way to the sideline using every inch of the field. Lapari can't get the easy reset. So Galt has to go for the second one. Lapari bids and catches. Lapari with a low one. Kylo gets himself a, a block. I don't think it was going to end up in the hands of a chilly player. Now another throw out. Oh, that is a great catch up high. The assist by Du Alexa. Sending it all the way out to that far side of the field. So Chile again just showing that they're a force to be reckoned with um, for a while. And yeah, so I think yeah, Chile are just showing, going from strength to strength. 
Well, you've got an interesting stat about hot chili. Potentially, um, I'm I'm unsure. I'm I think you're right. This. Yeah. So, I just it just occurred to me that there's a number 42 running around there, which famously belongs to a very prestigious player on chili. That I am surprised that that number is being allowed to be worn, because um, I know that Tom Rigaki, I think, from my my memory serves me correctly, was 42 for a very long time. I could be wrong. We probably need Simon Talbot to confirm that for us. Um, or maybe even John Greenfield. Right yeah, there. absolutely. <laughs> Historians in Australian Ultimate. But, yeah, for a new player to be allowed, often teams will retire numbers with the greats. So I'll, I'll do some fact-checking and get back to us on that one. Because that's, that's a hell of a, a... That's a really big jersey to fill. <laughs> if uh, 42 is the number that the GAC ran around in for many years and now you've got it, that's... Uh, Good luck with that one. That's some broad shoulders. A nice pull by Black. Caston catches it, centers it to Woods. And Woods has played well. Nice break back to Caston. Sublime bringing this loose zone. Looking to slow down the chilly offense that's really not gotten going this game. And Pentland is going to blaze away with a wild one. Well, it was a seven, six foot seven Michael Vernon who was five metres off the sideline who actually caught that and Hot Chili give it up again they give Sublime an opportunity Jeremy Ha just uh, conferring and figuring out where this went out of bounds gets brought in Black oh it pops off his hands he has the beard he can't get it so sublime off one pass, give it straight back to Hot Chili. Rare mistake there, Rare mistake there from, uh, Chili, uh, from Sublime, sorry. They haven't had many unforced errors. Caston. Woods. Trying to get free. Gets it. And now throws the inside pass to Ramsey, to Galt. And Galt just going to go with an outside in to Caston. It's huge. It's huge. Oh. He gets it. The rangy Caston. And he's going to throw the goal. Is he? he likes it. He gives a point. And before it's even caught, he's walking off the field. Miles Caston loves it. Sometimes those go go gadget arms are good for something. Hey. Wow. Good for something. A humongous bid by Alex O'Neill. I thought he had it. That disc hung out there. And I thought it was going to be all O'Neill. It's the rangy Miles Caston who catches it, stands up, throws it, doesn't even worry about the minor detail of catching it, points and walks off the field. Now, I wanted uh, Chile to show a bit more confidence. There's the confidence that we needed. Oh, that is, I mean, that's very unlucky as defense to not get that. Oh, <laughs> He hadn't even caught it. He pointed. He's walking off the field. He says, that's it, boys. That's what we need. I love it. Miles Caston, one of the captains as well. It was uh, Matthew Hudson who caught the goal. The change in wins that we needed, perhaps. Probably one of the easier goals he'll catch this weekend at a standstill at chest high. Now, it can confirm number 42 was Tom Regaki's number. So, interesting that it hasn't been retired. Uh, to Paul for Hot Chili is Geordie Hallisay again. This win probably favours the lefty. He's pulled it a long way sideways. It might drift out of bounds. It will get down inbounds, though. A nice pull. An O. Oh. Breaks all the way out to Jackson Boche. Boche's just nodding down the field. I'm not sure what he saw. Chile bring some sort of zone to slow it down. Make Sublime throw some extra passes through the hands of Schmidt. Boche, middle of the field. Robertson. Boche. Kyle O. He's going to have a travel called on him. Victor Pubko has uh, seen that once before and Gonna go to the the good old uh, travel call. That's a good question, actually. Um, I think so he thinks I slowed down and then sped up for my next step, so within two. 
Um, yeah. I thought it was you can't speed up in the two steps. I felt That's I right. just had I just had my same pace for those two steps. This okay. is the longest step. So it'll come back to me then, I guess, if it's contested. Yep. Okay. So you hear the two points of view there. Um, Pupko is thinking that uh, Boche had sped up, and uh, Boche is saying that no, I stayed the same speed. Anyway, it st stays in the hands of Sublime, uh, just a, a brief interlude. Kyle O is going to go back to Alexa. So another pick called. Been a few this game. But generally, as the teams get higher and higher in quality, their offences become better spaced and picks happen rarer and rarer. And do Alexa. It's going to go to O. He's going to break it, create some width. Not quite far enough in front. Yeah, Jackson Poche had dropped that. And Popko just deals with it. So Chile get a turn. And now an opportunity to break Sublime. Well, they need this. Gonzalez Correa to the middle of the field. And now, oh, it's asking a lot, but he's read it so well. Peter Mugos catching for Hot Chili and a break. Big well, Rich, do we have a fight back on our hands? I, gosh, you love to see it, don't you? I mean. I think it would be a shame if Hot Chili were to come back and win it from here. They would deserve it, but I think Sublime have just played a better game for the whole game so far. Um, hopefully Sublime can keep their head up and about and um, not let this get to them mentally because um, this is when you get tested as a team and this is when you actually see what teams are made of and this is the difference between being able to play in the big games on the final day or not and it comes down to your mental strength and your ability to switch on after coming down a couple of points. So it'll be interesting to see what Sublime do now. Well, what they're going to do is they are going to go on offense. They really don't have a choice about that one. The rules of the game being what they are. But in terms of strategy and tactics, Sublime brought a little bit of a soft zone. Something that Sublime have been using. Do you think that they'll uh, go back to that or they hit an out-and-out -out zone there? Oh, for Chile, you mean, sorry? Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, I think that they'll go to their, their junk, so a zone for a couple of passes and then into match. We'll see. Uh, Jordi Halas say another good pull from him. He's definitely evened out the ledger. The good pull is outnumbering the bad. Bennett Carpenter goes back to Ha. And ha with that... Low, well-balanced pivot, breaks it through the middle. Vernon and Black, and now Carpenter, Monty Mazurai. Mazurai finds Ha. There is a bit of a collision in the middle of the field. So you'll notice Chile went from in their zone to matching up, and that's often when picks can occur as players are trying to find their match. Um, so I think that's what's happened here is there's been a bit of confusion and trying to find their players. There's a bit of a height match up there uh, between Victor Pupko, who's one of the units of uh, this Chile team, and Jeremy Ha, who is substantially shorter than him. Okay, lock in, lock in, right, Sublime. The wind is getting a little bit gusty. Oh, that's a wobbler. And just as I say it, Wardrop drops it. So, uh, Hot Chili get an opportunity. And if they punch this in for 11 8, that is a huge moment. It is going to be a timeout call. Victor Pubco calls the timeout and walks straight off the field. Four. Oh. I, I, I ask everyone that I commentate with, Beck Walbridge, what's your uh, thoughts on the midpoint timeout? Good, bad, otherwise? I don't think I would have called it then. I think that was a bad choice. Um, and why is that? Because I think at this point in the game, Chile have got the momentum. They've got, um, they've got things are going their way, and I think for them to stop play allows Sublime to catch their breath, have a bit of a chat, a bit of a G up, and because they've. Chile have kind of lost that aggression that they had at the start and this gives them a chance to go and get it happening again so it's just 
I I don't love it. I think if you're going to do it, do it outside an end zone and put a set play in, one that you are 100% sure of. Otherwise, I'm doing it between points. But every team does it differently. How you learn. <laughs> there we go. Beck Woolbridge, not a fan at all. This is going to give Sublime an opportunity to set their defense. Chile, of course, get an opportunity to set their uh, their offense. And on balance, that's always one of the debates is, are those midpoint timeouts a good thing or a bad thing? We'll see here shortly. Amy Chang, what did you manage to hear? A couple of the boys inside the circle strategizing on offense, but more curiously, some of the boys on the outside starting to sing a comeback song. Okay, the comeback song. So in after a timeout like this, offense, they get to set themselves up. And once they get into position, they're not allowed to move anymore. And then defense gets a chance to put themselves in the right position. So it'll be a, a horizontal rather for Chile. They go to work. And can they do it? As Payne looking for Pupko, can't find him. And Payne fits with close and tight one in there. Can get it back. Chile with energy out of the timeout, Lou. Oh, a big bid. Can't get there. And Chile on the doorstep. It's Lou who scored for 8 11. Ah, for a long time, Sublime have been that team that ruins someone, gets to the quarterfinals, and then loses. Um, are we seeing perhaps a little bit of that old genetics of Sublime that just struggle to close out games? I tend to think that I, I think, one, they haven't had a chance to play against a lot of teams. They haven't been up against this type of situation for a long time. So those newer players, they're learning now how they've got to dig deep, how they get themselves psychologically back into the game to play at their peak. Um, this is when you have your experienced players that showing through leadership, how you stay on top, stay ahead of your game, keep yourselves cool and not try and do anything too tricky and fancy to win. I mean, I said at the start of the game, I was worried about legs. I was worried about fatigue. Sublime seemed to be playing a bit of a flatter game than they were at the start. Um, is that physical or mental? Don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just interesting. It'll be interesting to see who they put on, Sublime put on this point and what they do with it. And the turnover in that point was, uh, I think it was Bennett Carpenter that threw an absolute wobbler and Alex O'Neill couldn't catch it. Two of the rookies involved in uh, giving Hot Chili that opportunity. And then Hot Chili just <laughs> brought a lot of fire on that, that offensive opportunity to punch it in. Halisay. Oh, this is probably the best pull of the day. That's just going to hang. And he's gone the complete wrong way as Glover. That is sat in the back of the end zone. Jordy Halisay has decided he's going to do what he can. Oh, it's a Callahan country. Chang catches it. He goes back to the middle to Kyle O. And O is just going to direct traffic. Sublime deep in their own end zone. Chang has to do something. The stall count is going to get high. He's in trouble. And they're at the back of the end zone. They're going to break it now through Glover Robertson and Alexa Radu Alexa. Oh, it's going to pop off the hands of Glover. He catches it anyway. They're away. Chang. Chang with a real flat one. Oh, that's a laser. And Sublime. Oh, doesn't that lift the attitude and the feeling in the game to be pinned that deep? and then go all the way to the other end of the field. Uh, I, I think some very cool experienced heads in that end zone had a lot to do with that score there. Um, most people when they're stuck that deep in the end zone will panic and it makes it very easy as a defensive player to, uh, to get that score, but they just kept a cool head, easily broke it through that zone and it just ripped it right apart. I think that's probably the longest point in terms of distance, we, we'll see this weekend. That one was about 98 metres long from the back of their own end zone to the back of Chile's end zone. Sublime go all the way for their 12th score of the match. We didn't actually see it on the screen, managed to get it on the footage, but the Sublime boys were all over each other after that point. I think they knew that they needed that point um, to keep themselves in the right spot to get the win this game. Still plenty of time as well, Beck. Uh, there's 28 odd minutes left. Play to the cracking pace. That's a pretty good pull by there. 
Is it going to stay in? No, it's just going to drift. Needing a little bit of wind to hold that in bounds. Doesn't get it. So Miles Caston will get himself a brick. And he'll take the disc one third of the way up the field in the middle and start Hot Chili's offense from there. Sublime going to go with their soft zone. Potentially look to transition after they've stopped a few of the easy throws. That's the big show, Wood. Oh, and he's, he's turfed it. Another unforced throw away by Chile. They're shooting themselves in the foot. Mazarai with a bidding Lapari on his hip. And another bid, this time from Woods. It's McKenzie with the Frisbee. Sam Francois, it's an inside shoulder. Ha comes flying in and can't get it. Micah Ramsey doing enough to make sure of it. Pantland gets it off. And now Hudson. And Hudson for a moment thought about it. Woods instead resets it. Sublime, their defense is back on. And Woods gets free up the line. He's got a lot of space. Woods for the reset. The trap is on. That's a high one, probably to the advantage of Caston, who is quite the tall man. Oh, Ramsey. He's going to have to do a lot. It pops off his hands. Oh. And somehow Woods has just snaked the pack and drifted in. There will be a foul call. That is an interesting call. I'm not sure what, who fouled whom. I think Micah might be saying that he was fouled by Sam, potentially. A lot of input from a lot of players on the field there. So Woods is just going to keep it. Woods is going to go inside to cast him with a nice breaking forehand. He gestures under. Lapari goes out instead. And now Jasper Pentland looking down the field. The Chile offense is looking better than it did in the first half. They're starting to click and get some movement down the field. Vernon bids. Pantland. Oh, Caston rather is going to reach for Lapari. And Lapari, he's starting to come into this game and really show he's one of the leaders. That was a great throw there. Just the right amount of leading pass. So he threw it just far enough in front of his player that his player didn't have to work too hard to block any sublime players out. And Jeremy Hart turning himself into a human missile for a moment there. I think that's most of the sublime players, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, maybe we should just uh, call this the <laughs> sublime scud defense after the old uh, scud missile this body's flying around everywhere and you love to see it you love to see the athleticism miles caston just that's an excellent throw it's perfect out in front of har and josh lapari is having a great game here now, you would have noticed um, during that point, you would have heard some counting, like someone counting one, two, three. So because it's self-umpired, the players have to count the stall count. And if they get to the t starting to say 10, we say the t of 10, which kills me as a teacher to say, because t is not a sound. Anyway, um, and <laughs> so as soon as they get that initial sound out, um, that then potentially is a stall out. And so that would mean that it's a turnover. So if you're hearing the counting, that's what that's about. We'll come back to how that's not a sound. I need to know more about that. <laughs> but we're going to go with a forehand roller pull that's going to go out of bounds. That's a, a really nice pull, actually. And the advantage of this pull is it gets the defense to set up on the sideline. So unlike when it lands out on the full, where you can come and bring it into the middle of the field at that brick mark, if it rolls out, you have to take it on the line. And when it's executed well, it can create a situation like this where now Sublime have to break this zone that is fully set up. It looks like a 1-3-2-1. One, one. And Boche working in close order. There's now Robertson. Gets involved. Boche more than happy to play in the space provided by Sublime. And then he breaks it with a really nice hammer. And that's Alexa. Alexa's just going to... Well, you saw it coming. And for a moment... You were like, no, Radu Alexa, don't throw it, mate. Just hang on to it. 
but and it's he so threw exciting. It. It's so and, exciting. And Lewis Fitter has got himself a layout block. Gonzalez Carrera is going to reach with a big outside in. It's misread by Nathan Payne. Now, I just want to say that layout for you. Aldon normally isn't an emotional, externally emotional man. There was a big noise from Aldon after that layout. Perhaps him knowing what it is. Oh, and a bit of a floater. Kyle O gets it, moves it to, to Alexa. And O just running rings around Nathan Payne at the moment. A bunch bigger man, a big inside breaking disc to Wardrop. And Wardrop. Oh, a bidding pain. It goes the wrong way. And Wardrop, Wardrop to Boche. And Boche enjoyed it. He is a very much a goal enjoyer. I tell you what, Hot Chili, they're, they're showing a bit more of what they can do. I think they've still got some things they need to tweak. And those unforced errors have really cost them dearly in this game so far. But they're starting to stand up a little bit and show what they've got. I think that that is a good introduction to Division 1 Ultimate for Alexa Radu. Um, he, uh, you can't make those throws, unfortunately, at this level. They're, they're too big, too fast. You, If it's not uh, really open, it's probably not open. And that's an excellent play by Lewis Fitter. It's full credit to him. He was there, but he still had to make the play. Absolutely. And as I've said before, to make that play on defense, I find it's a little bit more difficult to do than on offense because there's a bit more risk. And also less time to react. The disc often coming when you're not totally expecting it. Woods, centers to Pentland, Sublime, bring their soft zone as they've done all game so far, Pentland. Miles Caston. Caston with an outside in flick. Woods, you hear the calls from Sublime. They're drifting back into single coverage. Hudson, who's played well. Woods, who's been really good. Oh, and I put the total mocker on him as he throws it away. No, he's going to ask for this one back on a foul call. It's one of the more tongue-in-cheek jokes in Ultimate that um, never thrown a, a break backhand that wasn't fouled. It looked... <laughs> it didn't look like... Uh, yeah, um, I don't know if... Yeah, I'm loving this call, but that's, you know, well, I'm not actually, on the field. I'm, I didn't feel anything. Ryan Black hasn't contested this. He's uncontested, so... Obviously, there was something there. Obviously. Otherwise, there would be a, um, a bit of a discussion. I wouldn't say a raging argument, but definitely a discussion. Kasten will get the... Disc, and now he's going to go with the forehand again. <laughs> Puts the, the springs on and goes into orbit. Yeah. Hot Chili, nice goal for them. That's their 10th of the match. They're making them work for it. So we're down to, what, 19 minutes left in this game. Game to 15. It's, Presumably. Yeah, like, I mean, it sounds easy, but Sublime just need two points. Yeah. However... <laughs> Hot Chili not going to make it easy for them, and they're really bringing, they're making them work for it, which I think is good. Because so. this game in the first half didn't look particularly close. The Sublime were firing on all cylinders. Looked like they just played a, you know, a hard tournament against the best in, in Australia, and we hadn't seen them in three years. But that uh, that fire has faded here as Hot Chili have become more comfortable in this match. And I spoke earlier about the body language of Sublime. If you look at it now, it's just not quite what it was. There isn't the same strut. There isn't the same chest puffed out kind of confidence and swagger that they had early on. Um, so, yeah, Hot Chili really being able to kind of take the wind out of their sails a little bit in this half. Is it enough, though, to get them the win? Well, at this stage, the equation is really simple. Hot Chili need five, Sublime need two. And they've got 18 minutes to do it. Jordy Hallis say on camera right there, disc in hand, ready to pull. So uh, really come into this game with the pulling duties. Has put up pretty much every single one for this hot chili D line. There's only been the one pull where he wasn't the man. 
This one is a bit lower, less distance than he managed the last time around, which placed and pegged Sublime so deep. Oh, goes to the lefty, Robertson, to Jackson Boche, and Boche's going to go to Chang. Oh, a huge bit by Fitter. He can't get to that one, though. And now, Alexa. Redo Alexa has a moment. He resets to Kyle O. Boche in the front of the end zone. Do you think there was a bit of a lesson learnt there from Sublime after watching that chili point going, you know what? I just got it long. I'm just going to hold on to it, reset it, throw it into the middle rather than try and force it quickly into the end zone. I think there's a, a lot, a lot to that, that's for sure. But can you tell me about how the t sound is not a real sound? <laughs> oh, that sounds like a dental no, stop. Is so it a dental in, stop? In, in education at the moment, it's all about phonics and, and there is no letter that makes the sound t. That is not a sound. It makes it t sound. There is a difference there. Um, so if you're teaching your children at home, just let them know. It's not, the letter T does not make a t sound. It makes it t sound. Just, uh, there you go, a little bit of educational advice for you. <laughs> because in, in Ultimate, we've got um, people from all walks of life, don't we? Absolutely. But, yes, I don't think uh, don't think many people are learning English uh, from counting to ten on the field. <laughs> well, there, there are stranger ways uh, in which we've learnt things. Um, and why not? You do what you enjoy. I think there's a lot to be learned. And Woods is going to go all the way over to Marl. Caston. Pantland. Caston. Sublime transitioning now in a match. Oh, huge, mongous bid by Vernon. I don't know how he has managed to get past Hudson. So now Jeremy Ha walking to the disc. Sublime going out of the diagonal stack as they have pretty much the entire game when it's on the sideline. Seems to be a set structure for them. Francois, McKenzie, Matthew McKenzie looking. Everyone goes up the line. It's a hot style situation that Jeremy Ha puts it in, they punch it in, that's it, that's the game. San Francois gives a kick spike, they're done here, that's 15-10. Sublime run out, deserved winners in this match. Oh, they had us a bit nervous at the end there, didn't they? I, I thought that Hot Chili had swayed the momentum there and I I didn't know that the inex if the inexperience of uh, Sublime could pull that out and continue to stay on top, but they did. They showed us that they could, and they did. Is that going to get them all the way in this tournament, though? Well, that is the big question. Uh, final thoughts from you, Beck. How do you, how do you think Sublime are going to go based upon that performance? Um, I think Sublime learned a few lessons in that game. I think that uh, those younger um, athletes on that team will be uh, learning, taking away from that, how they need to stay mentally on top. And I think uh, for Hot Chili, again, they've just got to fix those unforced errors. They had some pretty clean stuff when they got over those initial jitters. Um, but once they get those unforced errors out, I think they're going to have a lot more to show us. Well, I think uh, Amy Chang has managed to uh, pull aside Jeremy Ha. Um, who is going to uh, give us an interview. Amy, over to you. Absolutely. Congratulations on your win. I've got Jeremy Ha from Sublime here. Jeremy, how does it feel to grab that win? Uh, that's a really good uh, win. We've come out really strong. Uh, we've travelled, obviously, from Perth. We haven't had an opportunity to play against a lot of these teams for a long time. Uh, and we've really relished this opportunity to play against that high level. Uh, we've enjoyed it a lot, and it was great fun to put a win on the board straight away. Oh, it was great to watch, and I'm sure the audiences at home loved it too. You've got a bit of a gift for us, but do you want to show that off? Yeah, so um, one of our boys, they started the Strength Code. Um, they are the, the, the Strength and Coach for our team and for the Chaos team as well. So they've done really well here, the Strength Code. 
Oh, great. A little bit of extra product placement for us today. Um, we noticed on the line your team has a bit of a ritual before the pool comes up when there's a new point. Do you want to um, take us through that? Yeah. Um, so we give a clap right before we start our points. Uh, this is a way for us to reset and really get into the mode of the game. Um, that means that we pipe out all other distractions and we're all focused just on the, on the point that's happening. Great, and I suppose focusing on the points is really important. There were a couple of points there but Chile they were starting to sneak back up. Was anyone a bit nervy about it? Uh, not really. I think we that's part of the game. The game ebbs and flows. The other opposition will get opportunities to run and play. I think we just went back to what we did really well, which is communications uh, and giving each other energy from the sideline. So that's what our strengths are. Fantastic. Congratulations again on the win. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Thanks, and back to the box. Thanks, Amy. Uh yeah, that sock actually came off the foot of Sam Francois. <laughs> you see them actually passing it back. He's, he's got nothing on the left foot. Um, so teams there opting for a COVID safe spirit circle, which I think is very appropriate. Um, unfortunately, a couple of teams have got some positive cases around them. But um, yeah, what a great game. A great way to start their tournament for both teams. I think we haven't seen the best of either of these teams yet. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see where they finish up over the weekend. And we will discover that gradually over time. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. We've got another match coming up very shortly at 1 p.m. We'll see you shortly for that. On behalf of myself, Daniel Clanton, and my co-commentator, Beck Walbridge, we'll see you soon.